Hello and welcome back to Pinks 47 for part two of this humpback bridge build. So today I'm going to be doing the paintwork. So I've got a selection of different oil paints that I feel might may fit the bill. So we've got this, it is a satin, which isn't ideal, but for the colour it should be spot on, which is 168. And then I've also got some grey greens. Which should help break it up a little bit. There's another one. What I'm going to start off with doing though, like I've done on most of my stone projects, is I'm going to give it a coat of Magnolia Matte Emulsion as my ground coat. And then to break up some of the individual bricks, I can paint them individually in slightly different colours. And hopefully shouldn't look too bad. Right, so I'm going to let that all dry now overnight. Hopefully it'll lose its gloss look as I have used matte paints. But as you can see, all I've really done is chosen a grey and a stone colour and just sort of mixed it on so it's a wishy-washy undercoat. And then I've just picked up some browns and some really dark browns. They look like black, but it's almost dark brown. Just started breaking up the little bit so i'll probably use another color maybe something lighter again even just like an off-white and do a few more just to break it up a bit not sure what i'm going to do with the coping stones yet i think they'd be relatively uniform so i'm going to actually try and put some one mil static grass over the top of them or just some really fine turf for now i'll let that go off overnight and then think about how i'm going to start picking up the mortar lines Right, so I've added a few more colours since the previous shot. I've put a lot more of this 168 on it, which is satin. So unfortunately it's giving it its sheen. I'm not too worried about that because I know I can weather it down. And then the brown I've been using is matte 118. I've used a little bit more grey as well, the 106, just to break it up. So I've got the WWS plaster again and I've mixed this up to quite a sloppy consistency. I'm going to try and use this to pick up the mortar lines. So I'm going to just be putting it on with a spreader card as you can see. And then just dragging it out. Also, and then with a cloth, I'm just going to lightly rub over the top without trying to rub out it out actually out the mortar. So there we go, something like that. So if I quickly dry that with a hair dryer. That's just about dry now with the hair dryer. And now with a damp cloth or just damp finger, just rub over the top. It'll just clean the surface. And there we go. Start revealing the colour underneath. It's got to be dry. See how it's not quite dry here? So you're not quite getting the effect. 
So if I dry that over again with a hairdryer, get it bone dry, and then with a damp cloth, just clean the top of the stonework, and then we'll probably have a go at doing some weathering powders on top of that as well. So now all the mortar effect is dry, I'm going to carry on adding some WWS concrete dust, which is what I've said before, I absolutely love this stuff, I seem to use it all the time. And as you can see, I've already started in this area. And it's a very subtle change, but it's enough. This is what I'm looking for. Obviously I'm going to weather some soot and bits and bobs round here but the overall next stage is to get this on and looking at some reference shots that i took locally the other day this is looking pretty close now as you can see them popping up now So I've also filled the road again, so it's got a second skim on. And as you can see, that has helped the angle, this wagon to commandeer over the top of it now. I would also carry on with the transition along here. So it's not gonna be a straight road like this. It's gonna to have to start climbing hill before it gets to the bridge so I think I can get get round it that way so next I'm going to use some black soot and I'm going to put some soot in four positions so here here and then two on the other side I'm not entirely sure if more would have would be more on this side than the other side depending on the direction of traffic so I'm going to do it equally for now and then when I do my homework I can adjust it a little bit more when it's in situ. I'm going to leave it there for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. I picked up any tips. I welcome any of your comments. And next time I'll probably be trying to figure out some of the landscape around this humpback bridge. I might need a bit more time to have a think about how I'm going to tackle that. So in the next episode there might be a bit more detailing on the platforms. Perhaps looking at some LMS station platform fencing or something like that. Speak to you soon.